Feel the spirit flow, feel the spirit flow. Let the whole world know, let the whole world know. To choose the most influential songs of your life. Now, some people could just do a list and boom, it's done. It took me forever. How could you just pick just a few songs? And finally, every time I did the list, there was one song that came out on top every single time. And it was a song that I first heard when I was 12 years of age, 1969. And it took my world, it, it took me away from um, The Brain Loves Kamal to The Brain Loves The Challenge of a new song and a new tune. Now, I need to point out that this is a crayon. Presenting to a group of 15-year-olds, telling them that this brain, this magic brain of ours, is chock a mock full of crayons, and every crayon is a talent. And I put this up, and they fall on the floor and wet themselves laughing. And it dawns on me that maybe it represents something else. The musical talent of a band called Blood, Sweat and Tears. Again, who are the people old enough to remember them? For some of you that don't, this is retro, but they had a song written by Laura Nero when she was 19 years of age. And this song, I think, not only is the most influential song of my life, but this song teaches us how to teach. And it not only teaches us how to teach for 1969, it preempted how we need to teach for today's world. If you really listen to it, there's so many layers to it. So many messages within it. The song, we lost Nora, uh, Laura when she was 49 to breast cancer, an amazing talent. The son of a 19-year-old, transformed by blood, sweat and tears, getting stuck in and grappling and grow. And it was called And When I Die. And it teaches us how to teach. But sometimes you don't need to start big. You just start gently. You walk into a room, you start chatting, Students don't even know what's happening. And then boom, you slip in some other information. They suddenly realise you've been teaching them a lesson. Up comes a slide, or up comes something you put onto the chalkboard. Up comes a change in the rhythm of how you present and teach. You weave these little layers. Some big controversial statements, perhaps, sometimes, to get their attention. And then some repetition of your main messages. Repetition and variety to be able to play with. Ask big questions, make big statements, repeat your main themes over and over and over again. And when I die, and when I'm gone, Glyn Watkins, what was the legacy that he left behind? What are the seeds that we plant in each lesson and in our lifetime? And a change of instruments. You don't just teach with one instrument. You've got so many things in your backpack as an educator. Pull out music. Pull out a little bit of a, a, a challenge of a mathematical puzzle. Discover things and then label things. Work to variety. Ship the pace of the lesson. And every now and again, you pause. It's risky, but the power of the pause to allow students to go, what have you learned thus far? Now let's be still for five minutes and revisit the power of the pause to go deeper. And then you pick up the message. Sometimes you muck up. Sometimes lessons don't fly, but you keep on going. You pick on the innovation. Variety and repetition. Different sorts of sounds, different sort of pace. Keeping it alive. Keeping it moving. And when I die, and when I'm gone, what are you leaving behind in every single lesson? What's the legacy? And you've got to have some country and western. It's a rule. And what are your yeehaw moments? What are the things that the kids go, I remember Mike, he taught me this. I remember that teacher, she taught me that. You keep on building, you keep on going, you keep on flowing. And when they really think that it's finished, you're just starting. Because there are other layers to be able to learn. In a fast-paced fast Facebook world where they're bouncing, 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 travel deep on certain things. Revisit them, go deep. And freedom. The freedom to design, the freedom to play, the freedom to work with different methodology. And naturally be you. 
Reveal some of who you are as a human being. What is your aboutness? What is your quiddity? What is it that you represent? What is it you stand for? What will they not be able to not learn in your classroom? And you build up towards the end of a lesson. You build up towards the end of every day. So they've got an energy flowing. And then towards the end of the lesson, you slow things down. You stand still. Just let me go. You tell them the main message of what that lesson's been about. What are you going to leave behind? What are they going to walk out the door knowing? What is it that they'll never forget because of the variety of ways you've been teaching them? But you don't want them to walk out just thoughtful. Before you are closing the door on each day, before you're closing the door on each lesson, before the conference ends, you pick up the pace again. You want them to leave with a little bit of energy. You want them to get a little bit of flow. You build it, you build it, you build it, you build it. You keep on building it. You make sure you finish strong. Because I believe this song teaches us so much, doesn't make it true. I'd like you to chat with your buddies. Does some of that stuff make sense to you in how you're designing lessons for today's world and tomorrow's world? Does some of it make sense to you in sort of the flow of how we think a lesson through? When you power to pause, the power to go deep on certain things, the need for repetition and variety. My belief is the community of a school gets so much richer when you as buddies to each other help and teamwork each other on some of the nuances of being uh, the art and the science of teaching. The pe Feel the spirit flow, feel the spirit flow. Let the whole world know, let the whole world know. Every girl and boy.